Hi there. So welcome to our next lesson, and that is bank reconciliation statement. Now, bank reconciliation statement is also one of the fundamental areas that we need to look at in the financial accounting syllabus. Now, why? Uh, what is bank reconciliation statement? But before I come to what bank reconciliation statement is, let me tell you why uh, we prepared a bank reconciliation statement. You see. Every uh, month or at the end of the month, companies receive their bank statement so that the bank statement uh, details out the transactions that took place in the accounts of the company for that particular month or for that particular period, usually current account holders. Now, so if the company receives the bank account, the balance remaining in the bank account should be the same as the balance which is in our cash book at the bank column of our cash book. They should be the same. Now, when you receive money from your, from your, when you receive money in your business, you debit the cash book. So if you receive check, you debit the cash book under the bank column. Then you take that check into the bank. Now, when you deposit money in the bank, the bank credits your account. When it withdraws money, the bank's debit. So let's say at the end of the period, from your cash book, you know that your cash book is having a debit balance of say $2,000. Meaning that when you take your bank statement, your bank statement should also have a balance of what? $2,000. Meaning you have $2,000 cities or $2,000 at the bank. But what if you, re you receive your bank statement and your bank statement is also having a debit balance of say $8,000. Now, when your bank statement has a debit balance, it means it is what? Overdraft, meaning you've withdrawn more than what you're supposed to withdraw from your account. So that is an overdraft. So you, you begin and say, ah, but my cash book says I should keep, have $2,000 in the bank. Why is it that I'm having a negative figure of $8,000? So the, the discrepancy in the bank statement balance and then the cash book balance of the bank column is what leads us to the preparation of the bank reconciliation statement. So simply, we say that the bank reconciliation statement is simply a statement that is prepared by usually a current account holder of a company, which is uh, of a bank, which is the entity which we're going to be talking about, to reconcile the bank statement balance to the cash book balance. So we prepare the bank reconciliation statement so that we demonstrate to, uh, what occurred so, and in order to make the bank statement balance the same as the cash book balance. Now, if we are this re uh, looking at the bank reconciliation statement, then one of the questions we need to ask ourselves is, what is the cause or what are the reasons for the discrepancy? Why is it that your cash book will show 2000 that it is in the bank, but the bank is showing negative of 8000 so let's look at the reasons for the discrepancies between the cash book balance and then the bank statement balance. So let me list them down and then I will explain them one after the other. The first one is called unpresented checks. Second, uncredited checks. Third, bank charges. Fourth, dishonored check. Five, standing order. Six, direct credit. Seven, error by bank. And then eight, error by firm. All right. And then nine, omission of transactions. So these are the reasons for the discrepancy between the cash book balance and then what? The bank statement balance. So the first one is unpresented checks. What are unpresented checks? 
Unpresented checks are simply checks that are issued for payment but which have not been presented to the bank for redrawal or for payment. What does that mean? It means that if I owe you and I give you a check, then I give you a check today. Then tomorrow morning I go to the bank for my bank statement. Maybe when I give you the check today, you, did, you decided that you will cash it today, you will cash it on Friday, or you will cash it uh, tomorrow afternoon. So I go to the bank tomorrow morning for my bank statement, meaning your check will not be in the bank statement. So that is what? Unpresented checks. So I've issued a check for payment, but the checks have not been presented yet for the, uh, by the payee to make the withdrawal from the account or to receive the money from the account. Now, when there are unpre when there are unpresented checks, definitely our bank statement balance will be greater than our what? cash book balance because we have credited the cash book saying that we've paid you, but our bank balance is still the same because we've not taken the money or you've not taken the check to the bank in order to receive the money from the bank. So that is what you need to understand about the unpresented checks. The next difference is uncredited checks. Now, uncredited checks are checks that are received which are deposited or lodged in the bank but have not yet been entered or credited by the bank to our account. So what does that mean? You receive check from your customers, then you take the check as deposit into your account. But then, at, as at the time you were receiving the bank statement, the bank had not processed and entered the check you deposited in your account yet. So these kind of uh, checks are what we refer to as uncredited checks. So remember I mentioned earlier that when the, you put money in the bank, the bank credits your account. So when we say uncredited checks, meaning the bank has not yet credited your account for the money that you have deposited in the bank. So that is what we mean by uncredited checks. Now, when there are uncredited checks also, the cash book balance becomes bigger than what? The bank statement balance. Because you received the money, debited your cash book, and your bank account is also supposed to increase. But your bank account is the same. It hasn't increased, so your uh, cash book balance will be bigger than the uh, bank statement balance. The third one is bank charges. Usually, when it comes to bank charges, these are charges that the bank levies on the services that it provides to you, like ATM, SMS, internet banking, uh, uh, checkbooks, uh, a statement uh, cost, and all other things. Now, these bank charges are going to be reflected in the bank statements, but will not be in our cash book. So when this happens, this item will be in the bank statement. So it will cost our cash book, uh, our bank statement balance to be lower than our cash book balance. Because if in your cash book you say you should have $2,000 in the bank, but your bank statement you have $1,950, then you see your bank statement bank charges of what? $50. So the bank is charging you $50. So you realize that your bank statement balance has reduced by how much the bank charges was deducted from your account. So that is the third thing that brings about the differences between the cash book balance and then the bank statement balance. Then the fourth thing is about dishonored checks. Dishonored checks. Now, what are dishonored checks? Now, you, you realize that when you issue checks or you receive check from somebody and you put it, you send a check to the bank and the bank says that we cannot uh, clear the check for you or we cannot give you the money on the check, there are various reasons why checks may be dishonored. For instance, if there are insufficient funds in the account or when the amount in figures is different from the amount in words or when the check is not authorized or signed by the person who is supposed to sign the check and there are various reasons. So when we receive check from our customers, we debit our cash book. But when we take that check to the bank to deposit, maybe the customer does not have some money in the account or maybe the check is not really a good, uh, uh, an authenticated check or an original check that we can clear. So in that case, the check will be what? Dishonored. So that will also bring about a difference between the bank statement balance and then the cash book balance. 
Then the fifth thing is about standing order. Now, standing order is simply a request that is made by a company to inform the banker to make regular payments on, the, on behalf of the company for a given number of time, for a given purpose. What does that mean? So for instance, if you tell your bankers that, or you tell the bank that you deposit that, that every month transfer 50 Ghana cities from my account into maybe my, uh, my sister's account every month until further notice, then every month the bank will be deducting, the bank will be deducting, the bank will be depositing the money. It is called standing order. Now, standing order is also not recorded in your cash book because you have informed the bank, but you won't have anything to record it in the cash book. So it will be in the bank statement of the company, but it will not be in the cash book. Uh, uh, ways that companies use standing order is for instance, when a company is repaying some loans, or a company has bought an asset on credit and they are paying it in installments. So they will tell the bank, issue or deduct or transfer from my account every month X amount of money into this person's account for maybe 12 months or for maybe 6 months. So the bank will be undertaking the transfer and that is what we refer to as standing order. So standing order are payments that the bank makes on behalf of the customer, which is authorized by the customer, all right? Then the same thing is direct credit. Now direct credit is where we receive money directly into our account. For instance, direct credit can be in the form of customer payment. So when a customer pays some money directly into our account, or maybe we receive dividend or interest on uh, an investment that we have. When they declare dividend and they pay the money into our account, all of these items can be referred to as direct credit. Now, as you can see how it operates, it means that when the payment is made, it will hit our account and there will be nothing for us to record it in the cash book, so it will not reflect in our cash book. So that is what you need to understand about direct credit. Then the last three things are really uh, very important. The seventh thing is error by bank. Now, this is where the bank will mistakenly credit our account or debit our account. So when we talk about error by bank, it can be error debit, error debited by bank, or error credited by bank. Now, why does that, some of those things happen? It happens because of sometimes name similarities or account number identity. So, for instance, if we have Kofi uh, Antoa and then we have something like Kwejo Anoche, right? So Kofi Antoa, Kwejo Anoche. So because of the names, all right, the, the way they are starting and the way the words are related, a, a transaction belonging to another account, somebody who is making a payment, will be entered in your account. That is what we call error debited by bank. Now, when the bank debits your account in mis by mistake, they reduce your balance. Are you getting the idea? They reduce your balance. So that is very important for you to understand. Then the error credited by bank is also the opposite. Someone pays money, it's for the present account, or yes, and then the bank mistakenly enters it in your account. So the next time you uh, receive an SMS of an amount in your account, and you know you have not, you are not supposed to, or you have not received any money, or you are not supposed to receive any money. Certainly, you have to inquire from the bank who made the tra who made the deposit, and why was the deposit being made? Because if you go and withdraw the money and you consume it later on, you would still have to pay. That, so that is what we call error debited and error credited. Then the final thing is omission of transactions by the bank or by the entity. So sometimes there are transactions that may escape us in whilst we are recording transactions as a company. So if the transaction escapes us and it relates to the bank transaction, then certainly it is not going to be appearing in our cash book. And since it doesn't appear in the cash book, it means that we don't expect it to appear in the bank statement or the bank statement balance is going to be different from the cash book balance. So these are the errors 
or the reasons for the differences between the bank statement balance and then the cash book balance. Now, so when we are preparing the bank reconciliation statement, we need to always start with our cash book. All right? Some, or not always, but we always start with our cash books. You see, there are some of these items here like bank charges, dishonored checks, standing orders, direct debit, then the error by the entity. These items are items that should have been entered in our cash book for the period under discussion, but which have not been entered. Like for instance, bank charges, it should be entered in our cash book. Uh, this other checks, it should be entered, it should be entered in our cash book. Standard order, it should reflect in our cash book. Direct debit, sorry, direct credit, it should be entered in our cash book. When we make any error, we are supposed to correct it in our cash book. So these transactions are supposed to be reflected in the cash book. But the first cash book we prepared against which we are comparing the bank statement has not captured these items. So now we need to prepare a new cash book so that it will be able to capture these transactions. So the, the new cash book we prepare is what we refer to as the revised or adjusted cash book. So revised or adjusted cash book. Now, so the revised or adjusted cash book is where we bring our closing balance from the, uh, for the previous year or from the period. So whatever balance that there was outstanding, like for my scenario, I said $2,000. If that was the balance outstanding, when we are preparing the balance, the revised cash book or the adjusted cash book, that becomes what? The opening balance there. So we're just going to bring that up, balance brought down. We bring that in. Now, if it is a debit balance, we bring it in. If it is a credit balance also, we bring it in there in relation to that. Then, when you take your bank statement, things such as bank charges will be on the debit side of the bank statement because the bank has to deduct that money from your uh, financial statement or from your uh, uh, account. So, it will be on the debit side. So, the bank charge on the debit side has to be entered on the credit side of our revised cash book, which is as what a payment we are making. So bank charges comes on the credit side, like this. Then, this other checks. When we received the money, we debited our revised cash book. So now that we are uh, the check is disunded, we need to cancel that debit we've made in, on the debit side earlier by crediting the revised cash book. So this under checks is on the credit side, like this. Then standing order, as I mentioned, the bank making payments on your behalf. So what do you do? We, make, we bring it on the payment side, standing order. on the credit side like this. Then, direct credit on the debit side. This is money we are supposed to receive. So direct credit will come on the debit side. Then if the entity makes any error or omitted any transactions during the preparation of the cash book, which has now been realized, then we will correct it, all right? So we're gonna bring correction of errors. It could be here, correction of errors. Now this can be error of casting or a lot of stuff. So we balance it up well, when we finish. So it could be balance carried down here. And then balance brought down here. So meaning our cash book balance has a debit balance. So this is how the revised cash book is prepared. Remember, I said this direct debit can be a customer making direct payment into our account or we as a business receiving what? Uh, dividend or uh, interest on our what? investment as a company. So that is what you need to understand about that 
1. Now, so when do we finish preparing the revised cash book like that, then we are now in the position to be able to prepare the bank reconciliation statement. Okay? So when we finish preparing the revised cash book, the next thing we do is to prepare our bank reconciliation statement. So let's see how the bank reconciliation statement will be prepared. Now, the bank reconciliation statement can be presented in various forms. There are times when the examiner may not require you to prepare the revised cash book, but will still ask you to prepare the bank reconciliation statement. So bank reconciliation Now, the way the bank reconciliation statement is prepared will be dependent on some, uh, sometimes the balance that you have from the revised or the adjusted cash book. Meaning, if you should look at your revised cash book and it keeps a debit balance or it has a debit balance, there is a format you need to follow in the preparation of your bank reconciliation statement. If it also keeps a credit balance, there is a format you need to follow in the preparation of the financial of the uh, bank reconciliation statement. So we are going to prepare the bank reconciliation statement first, assuming that revised cash book has a debit balance. Okay, so revised cash book has a debit balance. So if we are preparing the bank reconciliation statement from or after preparing the revised cash book and having a debit balance this is how the pro forma is going to be we're going to have two cash columns then we're going to have balance as per adjusted cash book now the balance as per adjusted cash book is this balance here remember we said it's a debit balance so whatever brought down you had here you're going to be bringing it here. Not the brought down that will be given to you, this opening balance. No. The closing balance. After you prepare the revised cash book, the figure you're going to be getting there is what you're going to bring here. Once you bring your balance as per adjusted cash book, you are going to add unpresented checks. So you add back unpresented checks because... These are checks that you have issued for payment but have not yet been cleared. Hence, what do you do? You need to add it back to how much money you are having in your cash book. So we add unpresented checks. Then if the bank made any error in debiting, sorry, in crediting our account. So error credited by bank is also added. Error credited by bank comes here. We get a total, take it here. We add this to this, get a figure here. Then we come to less uncredited checks. So these are checks we've taken to the bank that uh, the bank has not claimed. So uncredited checks will be brought. Then any error that the bank does. So error debited by bank will be entered here and then we take it here and we get our answer so this answer is called the balance as per bank statement balance as per bank statement right so this is how we prepare the bank reconciliation statement if our revised cash book is showing what? A debit balance. So look at the pro forma well. Balance as per adjusted card book. We bring on presented checks. If there is any error that the bank has credited, we add it to it. Then we go to less uncredited checks and any error that the bank has debited in relation to that. Now, there is a way that sometimes the examiner will give us the balance as per bank statement and will ask us to find this one. 
So, now, with this one, it means that your bank statement is also keeping what? A credit balance. I hope you are getting the idea. So, your bank statement is keeping a credit balance. Your revised cash book is also keeping what? A debit balance. Meaning you have money in the bank. So, we can flip this formula. Oh, sorry, this pro forma. We can turn this pro forma upside down. Now, when we turn this pro forma upside down, it will be like this. So, bank reconciliation statements. Still, we're going to have two cash columns like this. So, look at how what we flip it up is going to be. We will start with balance as per bank statement. Then this time around, we will add uncredited checks. Then error debited by bank. So we add it up, get an answer here. Then we less unpresented checks. Then error credited by bank. The answer we get, we take it here, and boom, we get balance as per revised cash book. So this is turning this pro forma upside down. So when we turn it upside down, we bring the bank statement, the balance that is on the bank statement, then we add uncredited checks. These are checks we've taken to the bank, but the bank has not what, credited our account yet. So we take whatever balance that it is that is on the bank statement, then we add how much that the bank should have added. Then we subtract the check issues that we've made that has not also been what, cleared. Then we will now get the balance that is reflected in our cash book. So this is how the bank reconciliation statement is prepared. If our revised cash book keeps a debit has a debit balance and our bank or our bank statement has a credit balance. So if our revised cash book keeps a debit balance and we are preparing the bank reconciliation statement, then we go by this approach. But if the examiner gives you the bank statement and it doesn't ask you to prepare the revised cash book or the information is such that you can't prepare a revised cash book but you know that the bank statement keeps a has a credit balance, it has, it has been stated, which the examiner will state to you, then what do you do? You, you turn the uh, pro forma upside down and you go with this approach. So that is it about the bank reconciliation statement. But let's look at a second way. The second way is when the bank reconciliation statement or the revised cash book has a credit balance. So if the revised cash book has a credit balance, that means this is a liability, meaning you have withdrawn more in your account, right? So let's look at how the bank reconciliation statement will be prepared when our revised cash book has a credit balance. I'm going to suit that up. And so, this time around, credit. And that is number two. So, when our revised cash book has a credit balance, then the bank reconciliation statement is going to take a different form. So, we're going to have balance as per adjusted or revised cash book like that but this time around previously we saw that we added unpresented checks this time around we will be adding uncredited checks so we we'll bring uncredited checks here then error debited by bank will also be brought then we get an answer here now why are we adding uncredited checks because your cash book is showing a credit balance meaning you owe the bank 
Okay, you owe the bank or you withdraw more than you ought to have you are supposed to withdraw. So when you pick that negative balance or that balance which shows you owe the bank, you add uncredited checks. The checks you have put to the you have taken to the bank, which the bank has not uh, credited your account with. So that is why we added up. Okay, that's why we added up. Once we add it, then we're gonna less unpresented checks. Then any error that the bank credits, so when we subtract it, we're going to get balance as per bank statement. And that is what is going to be here. So meaning that under this scenario, our bank statement is also having what? A debit balance, an overdraft showing that we have redrawn more than how much we are supposed to have redrawn from our accounts. So we can flip this formula, this pro forma up as well as we did here. When the revised cash book has a credit balance or our bank statement has a debit balance. So when we flip it up, how is it going to be? The same idea here so let me soup this all up we're going to have balance as per bank statement remember it's a debit balance then we add unpresented checks then error credited by bank We get our answer here, then we less on credited checks, then we bring error debited by bank, right? Then we less it, then we get balance as per adjusted cash book so this is how the bank reconciliation statement would be prepared so what you need to understand here is how the bank reconciliation statement is prepared i want you to take your time and go over the things that you have written again and see how the various entries are being made under various circumstances so it is not that we have two approaches. You can usually the first approach for the two cases are what you're going to be using. But the second way, the flip upside, is also another way that a bank reconciliation statement can be prepared. Now, if you are going with this approach, then that means that your balance as the adjusted cash book, as we mentioned, is also showing us a credit balance. Okay, a credit balance. So this is what you have to understand about the bank reconciliation statement. So remember what we mentioned about the bank statement, that is the statement that records the transactions of the entity with what? The bank for a given period of time. Then we said that we compare the bank statement with the cash book and almost always, always, 99.999%, it is going to be different from what? The bank statement balance is going to be different from the cash book balance. So if it is different, if it is different, then we need to figure out why the difference. And so we mentioned about nine things that are the likely differences or the likely causes of this difference. And we spoke about the unpresented checks. We spoke about uncredited checks. We spoke about bank charges. We spoke about standing order. We spoke about direct credits and then correction or errors committed by the bank, then errors committed by the company, then also the issues about omissions of transactions. So maybe sometimes you will see in the, in the question that the company realizes that, realize that a transaction 
of whatever amount involving check or involving bank had not been entered in the cash book so it means it was omitted so this time around what we will do is we will bring it into the cash book and all get our revised uh, cash book then based on the balance if it's a debit balance we go with the earlier or the first approach which i claimed then if it is a credit balance you go with this approach and if it is if you are flipping it up trying to solve it then you go with this approach in relation to that so these are the concepts the principles that underline the preparation and presentation of the bank reconciliation statement so in the next video we will look at the questions that we need to be solving we'll go through some questions and then help you to see how the bank reconciliation statement is prepared and you will also have an opportunity to solve some of the questions on your own and you can send me the answers later on so i'll see you in the next video as we solve our question on the bank reconciliation statements